Hello, hello everybody. My name is Jude Adler. And I'm Sammy Belford, and we're reporting for Kids First. And today we will be talking with Dean Devlin. Dean is a writer, director, and producer, as he brilliantly produced did Geostorm and wrote Independence Day, and much more. Dean is now the creator and producer of his new hit show, Almost Paradise. It's so nice to have you here today. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Okay, to get us started, what were some of your early inspirations for the show? What made you think this needs to be a show? Well, I am a, uh, 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 a Filipino-American, and growing up in the United States, uh, I never saw Filipinos portrayed on television. Uh, even when actors were Filipino, they, they would uh, portray uh, other Asian cultures. So I've always wanted to do something that, that took place back in the Philippines. And uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, we came up with this idea and got very excited about going there. And we actually became the very first American scripted television series to ever shoot in the Philippines. So it was really remarkable. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Um, and Dean, when thinking about who you wanted to portray, Alex Walker, what distinct characteristics of an actor did you want for this role? Well, Alex is a very damaged character. He had, he had worked uh, in the DEA for many, many years and it cost him his marriage. He lost his relationship with his daughter. Um, and uh, when his partner betrayed him, it was the final straw. And, and he had a kind of a nervous breakdown. And so uh, uh, he decided that he wanted to go somewhere relaxing having no idea that he's chosen the worst place in the world to go to relax. Uh, so I needed an actor who could, who could feel like they had that, that, that worldly experience, that grizzled lifestyle that they were trying to recover from. And the interesting thing is when, when I first started working on this project a long time ago, I had told Christian Kane that, that he would be perfect for the movie, but he was too young. But of course, by the time I was actually getting the, Thing ready to make it he had he had gotten a lot older so he was actually perfect for it by that <laughs> um and, and so dean th there are like there are a decent amount of classic crime busting tv shows out there so what process did you go through to make almost paradise authentic and original from all the other content out there well you know for the last several years there's been this this um this trend of making shows very dark and edgy and serialized. And I thought if I'm gonna take a show and place it in the Philippines, I didn't want it to be poverty porn. I didn't want it to be dark and edgy. I wanted to bring back you know, the good feelings of shows like The Rockford Files and uh, Magnum PI. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I could make a show that felt like a comfortable old shoe, a fun show to watch, then I could take people into a brand new environment that they've never seen before. Yeah, well, that's totally what I would think too, just, just to make everything because a lot of a lot of times, like just crime shows can get can get a bit repetitive, but like almost Paradise was just a completely new angle, and it just seemed really brilliant just to bring back, as you said, everything that everything everything that it used to be like it doesn't have to be dark and edgy. So I just think that's that's a really great way to think about it. Um, so and and when seeing Christian Kane first as Alex Walker, what what made you like fall in love with his performance, or just make you think that's my Alex Walker? Well, you know, uh, this is my third television series with Christian Kane. And, you know, uh, the, the, the amazing thing with him is, is what he's most in love with is doing stunts and action scenes. But what he's actually best at is comedy. So to be able to get that kind of blend of, of fun action, you know, kick butt scenes, and then, you know, uh, uh, offset it with a real great sense of humanity and humor. What were the advantages and challenges of filming entirely in the Philippines? Well, you know, before the show, I, I was mostly known for doing kind of like science fiction and fantasy shows. And, and what's great about those things is that they you get to take someone to a place they've never been before. And so I, I think in a strange way, although this is a, a, a crime procedural, going to the Philippines is like taking someone to another planet. Most people have had that I talked to had no idea that there were these amazing, beautiful resorts in the Philippines. You know, because usually when it's portrayed, it, it's always prayed, uh, the prayed, uh, portrayed, sorry, as as you know, a poverty-stricken nation, which parts of it is, but parts of it is not. And and so to be able to show this 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 environment that no one has ever seen before was a huge advantage. 
Um, and then, you know, the difficulty is you're a long way away from home. And of course, this all uh, happened during uh, the start of the COVID crisis. So trying to keep everybody safe while shooting the show was was definitely, you know, a difficulty. And Dean, do you personally find it more fun shooting in a tropical environment or do you prefer to shoot in a more familiar territory? You know, I, I always like to shoot someplace I've never been before. It's one of the great things about my job is it takes me to places that I otherwise might not ever be. So uh, uh, it's always fun to be somewhere new and especially in the Philippines where people are so kind and warm and welcoming. You know, uh, sometimes you go to a place and you shoot something and everybody just wants you to get out of there. You know, like they turn up their car radios and they start blasting their stereos. Uh, but this was the opposite there. You know, people would come out of their houses with, you know, cookies and, and milk and, <laughs> and just want to like hang out with you. So it was it was really a wonderful experience. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. Really fun. I, I would love to do that. Um, when creating this show, um, do you put yourself in your character's shoes to help fuel your imagination and explore what the characters might do? I don't do it that way. The way I, I write is I write as, a, as like a fanboy. You know, when I was younger, I used to go to all those sci-fi conventions and things like that. I'm a, I'm a fan of genre entertainment. So when I write, I really write it based on what I want to see. Yeah. And if somebody else is making it, great, then I'll go watch it. But if someone else isn't making it, then that gives me the opportunity to go write it and try to show it. And I really wanted to show this kind of fun uh, uh, you know, adventure show you know, where the last year has been so difficult for so many people and it's been a darkness that we've lived through. So I thought good time for the entertainment to be uplifting and fun. Yeah, totally. And speaking of just um, just loving these characters, is it hard creating characters in specific hopes that the viewers will resonate with them? Well, you never know what people will resonate with or not, you know. So I always just try to write characters that that I fall in love with. And then I just kind of hope that that passion for those people will become infectious and other people will feel it. But, you know, the, a big part of that really is beyond the writing, it's the casting. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you cast the right people, they kind of become lovable no matter what you put in their mouth, you know? Yeah. So we, we had really good actors who were just adorable and, and fun to watch and, and they, they, they made it all come to life. Yeah. This show clearly tackles some very intense topics that unfortunately go on in our world. Is it hard creating and producing the exploration of those topics? Well, I think the difficulty is to, to deal with those topics respectfully, but yet still do a fun, light show. Uh, you know, because any one of those topics could have gone very, very dark. Um, but at the same time, I think to ignore those topics would, would make the show too fluffy. You know, it wouldn't have any, any resonation. Uh, uh, so I, I think being able to 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 bring real world things into our fun show uh, brings weight to it. And what we found is that when there is a underlying story that has weight to it, we can actually get sillier because the two things kind of balance each other out. Was it also hard for the actors just for them to be in the shoes of someone facing some horrific events? Well, sometimes it would touch home. And they, and they would find themselves kind of really emotionally charged by it. You know, there's certain subjects that uh, um, have a reality to our actors. You know, I won't go into that. I'll let them <laughs> decide what to talk about there. But, you know, it, it would be interesting because sometimes I would write something not knowing that it was related to the personal life of that actor. And then they would call me and say, do you know that I'm going through something very similar to this or that a family member did? And so it's, it's um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to watch how that, uh, resonates with the actor and how it brings out something from them that uh, is beyond just normal acting because there's a truth to it. Mm -hmm. um, and for everyone watching, Almost Paradise is streaming free on IMDb TV. So Dean, did IMDb contact you about your show or did you bring it to them? Well, I'm actually doing another show for IMDb right now called Leverage and uh, we're shooting it. And this is a revamp of a show I did eight years ago. And while we were doing the show, I suggested that they take a look at uh, two of our other shows, one being The Outpost and, and, and Almost Paradise. And they fell in love with those shows and they put them on and they've just been a fantastic partner. And it's nice to be able to offer this to people for free because I think people are paying a lot of money now for all these different streaming services. It, it's nice to be able to say, hey, you don't have to pay for this one. Just, just turn it on, leave it on and enjoy it. Yeah, as a person who uses IMDb all the time, it's just really nice knowing that I have access to a great TV show that I don't really have to pay for. 
Um, exactly. And, yeah, exactly. Um, and so what are some positive messages that you hope that the viewers will take away from the show? Well, you know, I, I think that there is a, a sense of what is peace and what is family. And, you know, uh, uh, he, he came there to find a sense of peace and he, and he finds it through a new family, a family that he has earned as opposed to being born into. And, and it's fun to watch that growth. It's fun to watch how, how people who, who, when they meet each other, want to kill each other, but over time can find a way to bond with each other. And if there's any message that our world needs right now is that people who disagree with each other need to find a way to love each other. Mm -hmm. That's a great and we just have to ask are, and we just have to ask are there any plans for a season two so right now what imdb has told us is that if enough people watch it on imdb they're going to commission a season two so we're busy working on writing it and coming up with it and if enough people tune in uh we'll start shooting later this year and do a do season two well thank you so much <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Dean, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. And for everyone watching, please make sure to like and subscribe to our Kids First YouTube channel so you don't miss our, miss our next interviews or reviews or the ones of our teammates. My name is Sammy Belford. And my name is Drew Dadler. We'll see you next time. I see you are taking your stress management very seriously.